So hello everybody. It is, uh, what is today? It is the 26th of February. This is Michael Watson. This is the IACT IMDHA presenter series. Um, here in Florida, the weather is getting beautifuler every day. Uh, and it's all getting so exciting as we count down to Catch the Wave at Hypno Expo 2017 in magnificent or on magnificent Daytona Beach. Um, this uh, tonight is our seventh session of 15 Sunday evening programs where you can hear from the fantastic speakers and presenters that will be offering pre and post conference programs at the expo. Uh, and in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to be talking with Scott Sandlin about his two day program, Transcending Techniques. I love the ambiguity in the title, by the way. And I will be introducing Jim to you in just a minute here. But uh, I want to make a couple announcements before we get started and a little bit of housekeeping details. Um, first of all, to let you know that uh, this program is being recorded. So uh, the recording will be posted on the Mind Matters Forum tomorrow uh, by noon. Uh, if I, uh, if I uh, you know, don't uh, in, overindulge in the Oscars tonight, but uh, certainly should be by noon tomorrow. And uh, also, the recordings are posted on the website. So if you're not a member and you don't go to, up to the forum, you can uh, just go on the IACT or IMDHA websites. And at the top of the page, you'll see the word, it says conference, and there's another tab that says uh, media. Either of those are ways for you to get to, uh, to the recordings. If you click on the conference link, it'll drop down a menu, and one of the choices is teleconferences. So click there. It'll give you a list of all the programs that we've had so far. You can click on the one that you're interested in hearing, and uh, you can play it right there. Uh, uh, I believe that you can download it from there. I just realized I don't know what I'm talking about, but that may be true. Um, but you can certainly listen to it there. Um, and under the media tab as well, uh, if you click on that, you'll see the Hypnocaster, and the Hypnocaster has a whole lot of wonderful recordings, uh, and the most recent of which will be these uh, programs that we've done. So it'll show the date and who's the speaker, and uh, you can listen to the ones that you're interested in there. And uh, while you're out there on the website, by the way, be sure to collect your CEUs. Uh, you get a, an hour's worth of CEUs for being here with us tonight. All you need to do is to log in at the IACT or IMDHA website, or both if you're a member of both. Uh, log in with your member ID, uh, and if you scroll down when the members page comes up, there's an area for you to enter your CEUs. Just give a little description of uh, what you want the CEUs for. Just tell them you were uh, on the presenter series calls uh, before the conference, uh, and uh, the number of hours, so tell them, of course, one. And... Um, and if you have any trouble getting the recording at all, by the way, uh, after all those other choices, you can always contact me at flhypno, just think Florida Hypnosis, at Outlook.com. And next week, we will be talking to Richard Nongard about his uh, one-day program, How to Get Clients from the Internet. So uh, we need to keep you all muted during my chat with Scott, but we will give you a chance to unmute and to ask questions towards the end uh, of our time here tonight. Um, and I mentioned earlier that some of you might discover down at the bottom of your screen that you can click on chat and a little chat box will open up. So that if something comes up that you need to send us a message or something like that while we're, uh, while we're going on, you can, uh, you can use it to do that. And uh, now, uh, Transcending Techniques, uh, a uh, post-conference workshop that Scott is doing on May 22nd and 23rd, that's Monday and Tuesday after the weekend of the conference, which is the 19th, 20th, and 21st of May uh, in Daytona Beach. I gotta tell you about Scott. Uh, Scott, I think, is one of the people that I have known longer than almost anybody in IACT and IMDHA. He's the only hypnotist to ever work on the staff in a chemical dependency center, dental office, and a doctor's office at the same time. Um, it must have been a very large office. He, he has spent over 15 years uh, working on staff in various clinical offices, running a private practice, uh, and is the executive director of the Newport Clinic. Uh, Scott has created the largest free resource in the history of hypnosis, that is hypnothoughts.com, and a school with one of the most demanding curriculums in the profession, that's the Hypnosis Practitioner Training Institute, uh, of which I am honored to be uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the trainers uh, in that uh, in that program. Scott is well known for his laid-back approach to teaching, sharing, and learning more about hypnosis. He's certainly an award winner in my book. So I got to start out uh, by asking you on this Oscar night, Scott, who are you wearing? 
Who am I wearing? I am wearing, I'm wearing a watch my wife got me. That's the only interesting thing I'm wearing. I got, my wife gave me a watch in Hawaii and I am wearing a wooden watch. Ah. So that's what I got for you. Besides that, it's jeans and t-shirt as usual. Well, it's your dad clothes, so uh, so we could call them Gucci Gucci Goose. <laughs> I really like that. I am definitely in dad clothes. Yeah. Well, we're really good to ha glad to have you here with us tonight. And uh, I know the official description of your class is uh, it's just a, a tiny little paragraph that says it's a hands-on training for people who have been learning online, insights, feedback, and deep understanding on how to make the most out of what you have been learning. And we're anxious to uh, hear a little bit more about it. So uh, uh, why don't you just start us off with a general description of uh, what it is that you're up to, and we'll get into some details. Sure. So uh, this is a class I've been teaching for about four or five years now, and it, it came from HPTI. You know, uh, HPTI is a school where we, we teach hypnosis online, and we think that there's an important part of hypnosis education that can absolutely happen online, and then there's a part that really requires a lot more feedback. Uh, I use a lazy example consistently, but the example of uh, where to position yourself during different inductions. Uh, you know, Sean Michael Andrews is another person that you guys are going to have, I'm sure, during this presenter series if you haven't already. Uh, but I remember watching Sean Michael Andrews uh, a couple of years ago at, uh, at a conference doing a demo, and I watched his footwork during a rapid induction. And, and I pointed to the person next, I, I, you know, I tapped the person on the shoulder, I said, this guy's fundamentals are beautiful. And there's a, there's a lot to be said for these little nuanced fundamentals, where you're putting adverbs, you know, where your feet are, you know, these things that you, you just, you want the real time feedback. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to create a class that was based on that uh, because there's a lot of online material that's very technique -y, right? You know, it, it's, it's good. I, I don't want to make it sound like that's not a good thing, but I think the nature of a DVD course or an online course is going to be centered around techniques uh, that you can just sort of put into a, a, a list and give somebody that list and give somebody that script and have them practice that. And that's a good thing. Um, and I think adding to that is having them be able to answer why they're doing it. And uh, a big part of the class is me talking through the first session you have with a person and the second session you have with a client and we role play the whole thing out and force everyone to communicate and articulate why they're making the decisions they're making. Not just, well, you know, Michael Watson tells me to do it that way. Well, that's, you know. Well, that's a good enough reason. It's a great answer. Um, <laughs> that's why I do a lot in my life. Um, but, and we say over and over in the class, look, that's a fine answer in the real world. But in this room, that's not good enough. So why you're using that, you know, therapist -y voice, why you're using that soft, breathy voice right now, why are you using that when you're in this role during the role play, but not when you're the client in the role play? Why'd your voice tone switch? And what's that mean? And what are you trying to do? And is it intentional? So we really break down everything uh, that we can, and which is why we take two days to do it. Um, and we go into all these, and we're just exposing each other to different philosophies and different approaches and breaking things down and creating a space where you can experiment with different approaches and get honest feedback from people who've tried it that way before. So that's that's what the class is all about. It sounds like it's pretty organic uh, in the sense that uh, uh, if, if somebody took this class last year, for example, uh, would it be worth their while to do it again? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've had people take the class four times. Uh, so we teach it four times a year. Um, and I don't always teach it uh, every time. In fact, the next time it's being taught is in two weeks. It's being taught by Martin Peterson, who I think you know, a guy out of uh, Denmark. Uh, and he's teaching it actually in this room. He's coming to the Newport Clinic to teach it. Um, and so, yeah, it, it is. It, it's very organic and it, it shifts. There's a, a ballpark curriculum, but uh, a lot of it is based on who's in the room and where they are in their progress in their profession. Nice. Something that I, that I really find attractive about it too is, is the notion that uh, uh, I, like to, I like to go to supervisions, you know, when there's that opportunity. Uh, and, and typically, uh, uh, Stephen Gilligan does his supervision as part of TransCamp every year. <laughs> and basically, it's, it's, it's that kind of close-up fine-tuning, you know. 
it's like it's like do something and let's watch and let's adjust and tweak uh and and really getting it from uh you know from a mentor uh is just a, a lovely thing so uh so it sounds it sounds uh sounds beautiful it, it's honestly it's a lot of fun it really like it's my favorite class that I teach. You know, I've, I've taught a bunch of classes over the last however many years and I've been doing this for a long time and the, the nuances that you can get into it. Because when you're opening a new technique, when you're saying, all right, we're gonna talk about pain control, we're gonna talk about whatever the thing might be, you, you owe it to the students to get into technique and give them things that they can take with them. Uh, in this class, you can, you can go down a rabbit's hole into you know, sort of weird, nuancey stuff. Uh, one of the ways I like to explain it is, when you watch those cooking shows, where uh, one, you know, one chef is talking to another chef, they're talking about finer points in the cuisine that I wouldn't understand, I wouldn't appreciate, uh, but I understand that there's like this next level conversation happening. And we get to have those conversations as peers and colleagues and really dive in and um, constructively criticize each other or call each other out on stuff and, uh, and to know it comes from respect. So it's, it's just a lot of fun to do that. Nice. So I, so I can hear that it, you know, it really can benefit anybody. Uh, I, I guess what I'm wondering is um, who's, the, who's uh, I don't know how to ask it because I think the answer probably is anybody. Uh, but but it's really sort of I'm asking who is it for in the sense that uh, originally at least uh, what you started talking about was uh, folks who maybe had been learning online and they've finished their online training and uh, and they don't really haven't really yet had a lot of hands on. Sure. So this is a starting point, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's definitely targeting those people because I think that's a growing population, uh, and I think it's the population that needs it the most. Um, that said, a lot of people come take this class who've been in practice for a while for the supervision kind of trance camp thing that you're talking about. Um, I don't know, two, three years ago, I taught this class and it was crazy. You know, Mark's Howell came and, and took the class for two days, you know, and, you know, Shelly Stockwell was in the room too. And I was, it was really a, a sort of surreal experience. And Carm was in the room, you know, these yeah. people that are, you know, really very much leaders in our industry. Uh, were in the room to take the class from me. And it, it's a very humbling uh, feeling. And, and he's like, okay, I'm going to teach something that you've been doing longer than me now to you. Um, but it doesn't have that feeling, right? It doesn't have that. By the way, the, apparently the chiropractor next door decided that Sunday evening was a time that was appropriate to hang some stuff on the wall. I don't know if you can hear that. Perhaps um, the award that he just uh, won on the red carpet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's an interesting coincidence. Um, but, you know, having those people in the room, it very quickly, uh, you know, just it turns into a conversation. And those guys have so many reps and so many experiences that, you know, it, in the organic nature of the class, it just becomes, you know, my favorite part, as you know, my favorite part about all these conferences that you and I have been going to for so long is those deep conversations. And so if you could create, you know, the idea was if we can create a structure around that so we can kind of point that conversation towards an outcome at the beginning and then have it last two days, that's, that's really the idea. How loud is that, by the way? Well, it's not, it's not too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's a way that I could mute him. But, uh, <laughs> could you get him to log in? So. <laughs> it's beautiful. I can't imagine they have too much more of that to do, though. No. So. No. So, uh, so you've been teaching this class for a while, I guess, since the since maybe the beginning of HPTI, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Two knocks for yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the old bang on the wall real fast. Do you know Morse code? Yeah, let's see what that does. Just let them know someone's on the other side here. Great. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things that I saw in, in the talking points that you sent me is uh, you're going to be doing an, a, a bunch of demonstrations, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go right ahead. So one of the things we do in the class is, you know, demos, right? So a person will come up, you know, volunteer from the room, and we'll walk through a technique, and, or we'll walk through uh, a pre-talk. You know, and, and people will, will be talking about things, and 
people say, well, what happens when this happens with your client? So an example, I guess, would be, well, what happens if they open their eyes and they say, I don't know if I was hypnotized? And the answer to that is, well, that means you screwed up beforehand, right? So that's a problem that you should know how to address, but that's a problem you should know how to prevent. And so let's talk about how we get there and why that's happening. And then we, we role play a couple examples like that. Um, the last time we taught this class, uh, a couple people were in the class. I mean, well-respected trainers were in the class. You know, Ken Guzzo was in the class. And uh, we just kind of started talking about nested loops, which I'm a big fan of. And so someone said, can you give an example of doing a process that involves nested loops? So we just had one of the, uh, the women from the class come up to the front of the room, and we just did a process uh, that, you know, you know, brief as it could be, you know, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 10, um, that just showed a couple loops being opened and closed. And then, uh, and then afterwards, we broke it down as a conversation and talked about how that happens. And then we said, do you, and, and we say this frequently is, do you guys want to practice that or do you get it? And usually the answer is we want to practice it, but sometimes it's like, okay, no, we get that. We can incorporate that next time. Uh, next time we break up into groups. <laughs> so that is, is very much how the class goes. Well, I, I would suspect that through all this, that the people that are in the class have uh, uh, a number of ahas, you know, uh, different, I suppose, for each, uh, for each individual and uh, as, it, as it well should be. Um, I, I'm just curious if you got any stories like that that stand out of somebody uh, or, or, or making, making new discoveries that, uh, gosh, just haven't occurred to them before. Uh, sure, sure. So the one that pops to mind is something I already alluded to, uh, but it's that therapist voice, right? That soothing maternal voice that uh, this woman was using. And, you know, she was broken up, uh, we were broken up into groups. And so she was with her partner. And she was the client first, and, uh, and then she was the, the practitioner. And you could watch her like, very overtly switch roles. Like, I mean, physiologically, you could see her sit in an, in an intentional way. And, and she started speaking in a different voice than she was when she was the other person. And I said, whoa, stop. We need to talk about what you just did. It's not, we're not saying good or bad. It's not a judgment thing but you need to be aware that you just put on a persona and you need to talk about why you're doing this because your voice is different. And to me, one of the things that I've noticed for myself, and so I'd like to let anybody taking the class with me uh, be aware of, is I don't use that soft, breathy voice specifically because if you do use that voice with five clients in a row, that's more air being pushed over your vocal cords and it dries your throat out more. And so if you're only seeing two clients a week, you, you get into the habit of it's fine, but all of a sudden you're on the news for helping a celebrity lose weight or something like that, or you're in an Oscar gift bag and now everybody's coming to see you. It doesn't scale, right? There's, there's no amount of uh, hot water and lemon and honey that's going to make that work if you use that voice too much. Right. And, so, uh, and so we just said, let's, let's talk about that. And so for the rest of the class, uh, you know, and that, and that was early on day one. And so for the next two days, I was, you know, just kind of hitting her with that, saying, hey, you're using that voice again. You, you can use that voice forever, but you can't use it tomorrow, right? Like for the next 48 hours, you're not allowed to use that voice. I want you to, ha you know, push yourself on this and see if it's the voice you want to use on purpose forever mm -hmm. or if practicing something 10 times is enough to have you switch. Mm -hmm. And she found that, and, and, and I know her well, um, and she found that she still uses it uh, for certain processes and techniques, but she uses it intentionally, right? So it's not, it's not something that she has to do. She now has a, an intentional thought process about how she's coming across. Instead of just trying to be nurturing and create a safe space, mm -hmm. she's her real human self which, you know, goes back to that don't do hypnosis, be hypnotic, right? So it, it becomes more natural. Yeah, nice. Uh, it, it, in fact, it, it's kind of interesting to, to consider that not only, not only do people get to learn from what it is that you're teaching them, but they might even get to learn from themselves something that they didn't even realize that they were doing that, you know, uh, that contributes to other people. 
with uh, other people in the class. Uh, we've all got some natural gifts. But also, the idea, I like the idea of restricting something. It's just kind of cool the way you said that, 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 that people tend to, to do or to overdo. Um, I'm remembering that uh, John Grinder, our, our NLP guru, you know, um, one, of his, one of his rules uh, for master practitioners and trainers uh, when we're doing exercises, he says, if you can, uh, I think it was, if you can, you may not. And if you can't, you must. And it was, <laughs> it was like, whatever it is that comes easiest for you, stop doing that for, for the day. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it makes all the sense in the world to practice things you're not good at when no one's paying you to be good at them, mm-hmm. right? But, but we can't help it. I mean, if, if you, it's, it's very easy to default to your comfort zone. And so the point of the, part of the point of the class is to expand that comfort zone uh, by stepping out of it, obviously. Yeah, sure. And it's a, it's a student dilemma because uh, I think we all learned in, in high school and in college that uh, – you know, we were supposed to, to do the best at everything that we, uh, that we do because we needed to get a good grade. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's a, different, uh, a different paradigm at work here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this, I'm very happy to say this class does a really good job of breaking down that um, approval-seeking behavior, right? Or, and there were that, that thought process. And it's a very, I mean, we've taught this class many times, and... Um, Every single time it's been very uh, just accepting. And one of the really fun things about this class is because it's so fun and laid back, other instructors come in and just co-teach for a little while all the time. Uh, Two years ago at IMDHA, Melissa Tears came in and taught three hours, two hours, just because her flight was in early and she was hanging out. And so she, you know, we had talked, set up beforehand. So she just, came in and just said, where are you guys and everything? What's going on? And just talked for like two hours and, and, you know, shared obviously her style, which is slightly different from mine. And we just did that. Martin Peterson, who's teaching it here in a couple of weeks, um, you know, he and I taught it at Hypno Thoughts Live. We co-taught it. And uh, Kelly Woods has taught it. A number of people um, will just kind of drop in and just kind of say, hey, I want to share this idea with you and just kind of insert this idea into this open forum and let you play with it. And, and that open-endedness uh, keeps the class different uh, every time. Great. Well, all right. That sounds lovely. Uh, I, 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 sign me up. Uh, <laughs> Come on in. You're, you're low. I don't know what your schedule is. Come swing by on Monday post-conference and, and share some stuff with them. Well, Monday I'm uh, teaching. Uh, I'm afraid I'm, 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 on the same, uh, I'm on the same time as you. <laughs> so there's a... You have a conflict of interest in how good you want to make my class sound. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like it might be a nice little class you're doing there, Scott. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess if people aren't very bright, they should come take my. I mean, the smart people should take your class, obviously. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm really clear. It, it, it sounds like just a lovely, lovely experience, and uh, um, and and I would recommend it to. Well, to anybody who's not coming to my class, of course. Sure, there you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so, so you, you, you've been doing this, you said, like four times a year? Uh-huh. We, we teach this class four times a year. We teach it uh, quarterly, right? So end of, end of the quarter, uh, we, we teach it middle of March-ish, uh, and then you get it. Okay. Well, I wonder uh, if anybody, why don't we, why don't we uh, give a, a chance here and see if there's anybody, I, I need to let the folks on the line know about this. Uh, if you have any questions or anything for Scott, um, we, can start, we can start doing that now. Um, and the way, that you, the way that we do that is if you're on the telephone, if you just called in on your phone, the way that you can raise your hand so I know you've got a question is to press star nine on your phone and that will that will tell me that you've got your hand up in the air and we'll let you talk with Scott. And if you are on the, uh, if you're on the computer and, uh, and you want to raise your hand, uh, what I didn't tell you about is there's a box for participants. Down at the bottom of your screen, uh, somewhere in the menu, you'll see that it says participants. And if you click on that, uh, you'll see all the names of the people that are on the call, including your own. And at the bottom of that participants box, there's just a little tab that says raise hand and if you do that, then we'll know that you've got a question. And you know, and if you don't, we'll uh, we'll just keep talking until uh, until someone does. But uh, when I see a hand up in the air, 
we will uh, we will let you in there. And uh, I'm navigating this screen. Let me see. Uh, I, I guess uh, one of the things that you're saying, by the way, is uh, what people will get from the class are insights, and insights, and insights. And uh, and I know uh, Scott that you have a 20-year uh, history uh, with hypnosis. I, I think when I first met you, uh, you were, and you may continue to be historically, uh, the youngest hypnotist that I ever knew. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm the youngest member ever in the IMDHA. Uh, still, uh, which is fun. I'm, and it's just because they have an age limit of 18 and I was, you know, 18 and not very many days when I joined. And so, uh, it, it's, you know, it's going to be difficult for someone to beat me just because of when my birthday is. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I've been doing this since I was, I was very young and I'm, I'm really deeply grateful that, uh, I, I got plugged into the IMDHA early on. Uh, my, my instructor, my, my first instructor, was a friend of uh, Dr. Ann Spencer's, who was the founder of the IMDHA. And so right. I got to know Ann uh, pretty early on. And so I got, I got pulled in that direction. Uh, and I feel really fortunate. I mean, uh, people like you, people like Michael Elmer, of course, people like Jim Duncan, of course, uh, Roger Moore. Uh, I mean, there's just been this great, obviously the autos, um, there's just been this just wonderful support I've had since uh, very, very early in my career that is, uh, it, it means the world. And it's, it's really cool to be in a position now, just because of doing this for a couple decades, that I get to, you know, appreciate it at a different level. And, and, and really, and I, I started this a couple of years ago, revisit the fundamentals and, and appreciate the nuances in there that all of us and our colleagues have. Um, and and the, these idiosyncrasies and these differences that pull you to be better at one style than another. Sure. And some of them are gifts and some of them are more predilections um, that, that do that. And so it's, it's, it's what keeps it new for me. Yeah. Well, you know, and I know we've all got things to share and, and, uh, and stuff that we can teach and share with other people in the hypnosis community. But I think for a class like this one, especially, uh, the fact that you have the, the wealth of experience that you have is really what's called for, because it's not just in one particular little content area, but that, uh, but that broad base that uh, you can't get anywhere else. I, I know a lot of trainers who, uh, uh, well, I, I won't, of course, mention any particular organizations or schools, but but I, but I know that there are some places where you can take a, a practitioner training, then you can take a master practitioner training, like the the the, the next week, you know, and yeah. uh, and then on the third week you can take a trainer training. So before you've actually even uh, seen any clients or <laughs> had a chance to see clients, you know, uh, you're 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 already sent out into the world to uh, you know shape uh, the the destiny of uh, future future hypnotists and hypnotherapists, and, yeah. and and some of that is fine, some of that is fine, um, but I think for this particular this kind of fine tuning, uh, I mentioned the word mentorship before, and I think that that's an important aspect of it, is that is that uh, you come with this wealth of knowledge, and like you said, you've got folks dropping in who also have a, a, a wide range of experiences and and also participants in the class who have been who have been at it for quite some quite some while as well yeah yeah so that's some beautiful stuff now let me see I'm looking here again it's uh, it's a little hard for me to do two things at once uh, uh, sometimes today being one of those uh, so I'm wondering who's got a question for Scott He's got a lot of stuff to talk about, so we'd love to uh, love for you to ask your question. Remember star nine if you're on the phone, uh, or just uh, raise your hand by uh, the tab at the bottom of the participants box if you are uh, if you are participating online. And uh, and if you can't figure out how to do that, by the way, if you can find that chat box at the bottom of the screen, uh, you can just uh, let me know in there that you've got a question, and we'll. Uh, we'll be able to hear what it is. And by the way, while we're waiting on questions, I obviously I've been going to the IMDHA for a long time. And I looked again, like I always do, you, you look and see what other presenters are uh, doing stuff. And yeah, you've got non-guard coming up on 
on how to get clients off the internet. You've got Jason Lynette just did one a couple weeks ago. I mean, there's a really great lineup of presenters uh, teaching really cool stuff. So uh, if, if I may say so, uh, I've been to 50 hypnosis conferences, which is a ton. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to go to the IMDHA conference, and I assume you are if you're paying attention to this uh, video, um, do a pre or a post at least. You really, the, the conference itself is great, and conferences are great. You know, you can kind of get these snapshots and, and find out what you're interested in or be exposed to new ideas and new uh, presenters, which I think is a great part to just to see who's new out there. Um, but the, the depth at a conference comes from the conversations you have not during class and the pre and post conference. That is where to me, just the bang for the buck value is so much greater in those two spaces. And so if you're coming to IMDHA, first of all, it's a very, very, very friendly conference. Um, so find people and, and meet them. Don't go back to your room when the classes are over. And, and budget out a pre or a post. I don't care what class you go to, go to something and it will, that's where differences are made. Uh, for your career and for your ability to uh, to help others in new ways. So my generic sales pitch that's sincere. Well, excellent. Because it, and, and I would agree with you, by the way, it's one of my favorite conferences. I love, I love being at the beach and I always kind of joke about this idea that uh, so many other hypnosis conferences in a room somewhere, there is someone with a, uh, with a, a bunch of participants in chairs and the leader of the group is asking them all to close their eyes and to imagine they're on a beautiful beach. We don't really have to do that. And I, I, <laughs> I think that's just so much better. Uh, we, can just start, we can just start from there. And uh, it's nothing, nothing quite, like, uh, quite like Daytona in May. So best of all you know, the world. Just, I, there is a very decent chance that I'm going to teach a part of my class on the beach uh, suddenly. <laughs> um, just, we might take an afternoon field trip after lunch just so we, uh, you know, don't get too stuffy. We may do that. We may do a couple hours outside. And then, and then you could do a guided imagery induction where they could uh, relax, close their eyes, and imagine that they're inside a hotel meeting room. Imagine yourself in the room you were just in for the last three days, <laughs> staring at the walls you've seen so many times. That'd be great. So, so Scott, is there anything else in particular that you uh, that you really want to uh, make sure that we give you an opportunity to share here with the with the group tonight? I don't want to skip over anything. And uh... um, I mean, I can keep talking about this class all day and all night. Uh, so I can, I can dig into more value on it. But really, the key is it's called transcending technique because I think that's an important thing for a hypnotist to be able to think on their feet. Uh, because not every client you get is going to be an easy one. Not every client is going to come, is going to be in the room for what they said they were in the room for. So even if you prepared well, you know, I had a client come in two weeks ago and the paperwork was all about one thing and they get in and the issue is completely different. And he just said, look, I didn't want to put it down in writing. Here's the truth. And I had to be able to adjust on the fly for that. Um, and, and that's not a unique experience. Uh, you know, just, you do this enough times, everyone's going to have that. And you know, humans are complicated and you need to be able to articulate what's going on. And even if you don't want to be good at, uh, this as a career, uh, I really mean it. This class is designed to make you appreciate hypnosis in a, in a deeper way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think this is true as much as it's for people who learn online. I think the more experience someone has going into the class, the more they enjoy it. Uh, and I, I think that's probably true. So that. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, I, I was thinking a minute ago that uh, um, one of the things about these calls and about these, these talks that we have here, uh, of course, we want to let people know what's going on at the conference and what the programs are and, and all of that. Uh, and I think we're doing a nice job of that and that they're pretty clear about, uh, I hope that they're pretty clear about what it is that you've got going. Um, what, I, what I wonder about is that uh, we also want to make sure that on these calls we can give people something that is of, of, of use to them, of value to them, whether they come to the conference or not, whether they take the, the pre or post you know, program or not. 
because uh, some of the folks, uh, some of the folks, this is their learning about hypnosis online is coming is, is attending whatever teleconferences they can get to and things like that. So, so if you'll, if you'll just, uh, just run a little thought experiment with me for a minute, if people didn't take your class or weren't able to for whatever reason, what would they have to do in the real world to be able to get the kind of benefit that they can get out of, out of attending a class like yours? I mean, what's, the, what's the hard way to do it? Yeah, I mean, the key is um, repetitions with honest people, right? So when I first got started, I hypnotized a couple, I was in college. So I hypnotized, you know, hundreds and hundreds of college students. And that was easy because I had this mass of people. But most of us don't have that. Um, and when I wanted to get really great at hypnosis, and I remember having this transition of knowing I was good at hypnotizing people to wanting to be good at, call it hypnotherapy, uh, and, and helping people with hypnosis. I was already done with college, and so I didn't have those repetitions. And I have hypnotized more teddy bears. I've hypnotized more tape recorders. I've hypnotized more video cameras uh, than I would care to admit. And I have watched more hours of me hypnotizing a teddy bear than you would believe. And I have listened to more recordings of the way I'm doing things um, and, and really dig in. There is depth in that. And, and I think we owe it to our future clients that we don't know who's coming. I think we owe it to the craft to some degree um, and to ourselves to not cut corners. I think cutting corners sucks. And anything you're going to cut corners on, it shows. And I think uh, the beauty of this is the, the similarity in the fundamentals. So how much stuff kind of maps across in skill set um, really makes it easy to pick up something new. And there, you know, once you reach sort of this critical mass of, of knowledge, it's really easy to acquire new, new techniques and new skill sets. And, uh, and kind of try on new philosophies. But getting that really requires uh, a critical eye and uh, an, a, an honesty about yourself and evaluation because too many instructors say on the last day of training, you are now one of the best trained hypnotists on earth. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I just wonder where all the other ones went, you know, <laughs> like every week we have the newest, best trained hypnotists on earth, and which means the other people got worse. Um, and, but you believe that, and then you go into your office, and you help someone stop smoking, and you help someone lose 40 pounds, and you help another person stop smoking, and you start to believe their praise and feedback, and you start to believe that you really are the best, and you really are amazing. And it's so nice to truly and deeply understand uh, you're just like the rest of us in a really great way, which means there's a lot more community in that and, and less isolation. Uh, and there, there's much more room for expression. And I really wanted to go back to that idea of those cooking shows where, you know, these expert chefs uh, compete against each other and they, they talk about what they appreciate about each other's style. Um, and, and that is what I would uh, strongly encourage everyone to do. I don't care what class they go to. Um, dive into that, it makes it more fun. Well, one of the things too that I think is really exciting about what you're doing is, is uh, well, the title of the class itself, of course, just touches, just touches me in, in exactly the right way. Uh, not only because of the ambiguity, but, uh, but transcending techniques. Um, uh, you know me well enough to know that we, I think we've had some of this conversation before. Um, there's a way to talk about hypnosis as a collection of techniques, uh, I guess. <laughs> it's not my favorite conversation because on the other hand, uh, there is something that is beyond or back of or however you want to say it that, that isn't the techniques themselves but, but the spirit that comes to it. Um, and, and I think that's equally important. And it's not something that, uh, that you're going to get without... Uh, without really doing some kind of interactive stuff like this. So, uh, so it just looks like a wonderful opportunity. It's fun. You know, I, I look forward to teaching it every single time. All right. Well, nobody's putting their hand up in the air. Uh, they may be uh, recording or waiting for the recording or something. They don't always ask questions, by the way. Uh, and it's probably because some of us are so clear in what we say that uh, there are no questions. 
so I understand that that happens from time to time. Without question, they all want to come to the class. Without a question, <laughs> they all want to come to your class. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, and and who knows? I may uh, I may at least manage to uh, wiggle away during a break or something. Uh, maybe my lunchtime won't be the same as yours or something. Uh, because I'd love to I'd love to stop in as well. It'll be fun, and I would love to have you. I really would. I, I, you're, I, I've said this to you many times. You are one of, and I, I mean it, you are one of my favorite people to listen to talk about the work. Uh, the, the, the philosophical approach you have to it is, is it's light. It's, it's very approachable. Um, but it's, it's based on, and it might just be the seminary school, I don't know. Um, but it, it comes from this really interesting philosophical uh, bend that, that, I mean, you, you come with good questions and it makes it way more fun. You and Brian David Phillips are two of my favorite hypnotists to listen to. And, and I think it's also, you're both very well read uh, on the subject and, and, and that probably has a lot to do with it. But Well, thanks. That's very nice of you to say. Sure. So uh, we are uh, at the end of our time, Scott. Uh, it, it doesn't take any time to... Uh, so just fly by on these on these evenings. Sure. Uh, so first of all, uh, I want to just thank you profoundly for uh, for being here. So thank you, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, if you don't mind, I just need to uh, again remind people that uh, you can go to IACT and IMDHA websites, collect your CEUs for being here tonight. You can also go to the IACT and IMDHA websites and uh, download uh, or or listen to the recording from uh, tonight. It'll be posted out there tomorrow sometime. So uh, be sure to do that. Next week, we will be here with Richard Nongard talking about how to get clients on the internet. I think that's a really useful, uh, a useful topic and something that uh, for those of you who are running a practice uh, really can benefit from. So uh, be sure and come back uh, same, same time and same that channel. And uh, we'll look forward to that. And now, uh, Scott, I'm going to do something that I do every single week here, and we'll just uh, hope that the uh, tremendous chaos doesn't ensue, but I'm about to unmute everybody, so I want to warn you all out there, everybody, uh, your microphones are going to be activated unless you have muted them yourself, but uh, just give us all a chance to sort of shout out, say goodbye, say, you know, uh, thanks, whatever it is, and, uh, and we'll see you all next week. So, uh, so thanks again, Scott. My pleasure. Thank you. And the microphone. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great talk. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. See you next week. Catherine said thank you. It was one of the talks. That's <laughs>